what was your, were you guys united that, yep, Steve, uh, Steve is the guy. And were you united, were you united in this new direction, uh, stripped down, leaner to do in utero? Was that like, you felt like the, all three of you were united in that idea? Yeah. I mean, I so, you know, it's funny. We were um, in between, <clears throat> I guess it might've been 1992 when we went down to Brazil. We had that week off in Brazil. Oh, yeah. We, um, we were playing th this festival. It was called the Hollywood Rock Festival in Rio and Sao Paulo. So there were two shows, one weekend in Rio, one in Sao Paulo. And then we had a whole week off in between. <clears throat> and we had nothing to do. So we found this studio that I think belonged to the record company. Yeah, it was a record company. And they're like, hey, there's this nice old Neve board in here. You're not doing anything. So we set up our gear and just started fucking around. Um, maybe for two or three days. And um, I think maybe S Kurt had some riffs and some things here and there. Um, a lot of it was just jamming. But it was it was great because it was just the three of us in this room with uh, nothing but time to fuck around and no one to tell us what or to do or how to do it. And I I think that that was kind of the beginning of the vibe uh, coming to record with Steve. Like there was, it, it wasn't really There was really laundry a room. There was Barrett's basement <clears throat> with his the, laundry room. Yeah, in my house, in my basement. Yeah, and there was a, lawn, a washer and dryer there and we set up and we just, we did these like improvisation songs. Yeah, yeah. and I think and, what, you know, again, I think that a lot of this was meant as some sort of return to us feeling like we still own ourselves yeah. or we own we're still the same people uh we're still the same band and we're not to be changed by all the other crazy bullshit and we felt most comfortable doing it like that you know it's funny i when i think of being in nirvana <clears throat> having been in the foo fighters now for so long when i think about being in nirvana it was just it it when we got in a room to play music it was so fucking simple there was all of that other complication just disappeared literally like put my drums in the back of my car go to chris's house then go to the basement and put it in there and start playing even though people consider us to be this giant band we still functioned as we always had when it came to making music so i think that's kind of, i think the brazil stuff is really that's where i started to get a vibe or a feel of what was going to happen when we went to record with steve well, those just, are considered like demos you know the magic was the the three of you guys working together and not being really interfered with that much and so you have this weird trip to south america where accidentally you get to reconnect with that yeah which is pretty amazing and then you think okay we think we we think we know the guy who can do this and that takes us to the studio where you record this, which uh, is 50 miles south of Minneapolis? Yeah, I had been there a couple of times already. I, I had done a wedding present album and a PJ Harvey record and some other, some other records, but... And I knew it was a capable studio. It, was, it had just been built a few years prior, so everything was still in good shape. Uh, stuff hadn't deteriorated to the point where you have to hold the knob in a certain spot to get the s vocals to come out and that kind of thing. Um, but also... I have a question. Yeah, go. This studio is called Pachyderm Studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazing. It, the house was beautiful. It was like a Frank Lloyd Wright-looking thing. It had an indoor Meets swimming pool. the Brady pool. Bunch house. <clears throat> it's like the Brady Bunch house. But flank, kind of Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm, am I crazy? Or was this place owned by some kid that inherited a bunch of money from his rich family yes. because his rich family was the family that invented that smoked brown plastic desk organizer. Desk organizer. Yes, the yes. story you're relaying is 100% <laughs> true. The really? guy that no started, one could make that up. The guy well, that, that must be Pachyderm, true. I thought Steve made it up and told it to me. The guy that started Pachyderm, uh, I don't know that he inherited money or if he just had family money, whatever it was, the money originally came from those three slanted tubes on the desk of yep. every- I had one of those. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. yeah. So I want to set the picture for people because one of you, I don't know who it was, described it as a gulag, meaning 
you go. I think that was it was you. Chris. He was reading Solzhenitsyn, like he's walking through the gulag and he can hear the snow crunch beneath his boots. Yeah, beneath his boots, yeah. and he's and and it, it it's like uh, uh you know a, an ancient Soviet detention center, but. A lot of it makes sense. With an indoor swimming pool. With an indoor swimming pool. It was pool, nice. Which a lot of gulags had, to be fair. <laughs> uh, the nicer gulags had it. Um, but one of the things that it, it makes so much sense to me is that, Steve, it's almost like you were offering them a sensory deprivation tank, saying, well, come to this middle of nowhere. You were booked because you're huge stars, number one band in the world. You're booked as the Simon Ritchie group. Oh yeah. Everything about it was tactical. I don't. I can't remember who I was speaking to about the the logistics. It might have been Janet. Was she working with you guys at that Billig, point? Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I think it was Janet Billig and I had many layers of correspondence about the about the the logistics of doing it. I sh there was a there was a general concern about Kurt having a relapse, so they didn't want him to be in an urban setting. Mm -hmm. Uh, that had another layer of concern, which is that, like, w I shouldn't even tell them that Nirvana is coming to their studio because even if only one person tells one person, that one person is going to tell for sure one person, and that one person is for sure going to tell 100 people. And before you know it, there's going to be a fucking news truck and a bunch of teenagers outside this studio, no matter where it is, right? right. So... And I, we got away with it for kind of a long time. Like it was, I think the end of the first week, um, some local kid showed up at the front door because he saw Kurt at the supermarket or something. <laughs> On the <laughs> snowmobile. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we got away with it. Like the, the studio didn't know that Nirvana was coming to record at their studio. I booked it under my name. I had done a bunch of sessions there, like I said. So I booked the session under my name. And... I uh, told him, yeah, it's the Simon Ritchie group. It's a country and Western outfit. And, so, and, <laughs> and, and, uh -huh. uh, and the, so like a lot of things, a lot of things were sort of tactical. Like, it, like if you're there in a residential studio, nobody has anywhere to go fuck off to. So they're not going to go fuck off. Right? right. If you have all the meals prepared by someone at the house, then you're not going to have people going into town and there's no chance they're going to fall into the wrong bar and run into the wrong guy and, you know, like whatever. Like that, a lot of it was tactical. But, right. and I don't want to overplay that because it was all sort of like, Kurt's doing great right now. He's being very productive. Everything is going great right now. Just in case, you know, like that's, yeah. that was the tone of everything. It wasn't like, Kurt didn't have to be handled with, like with mittens like it wasn't like he yeah. was like on the verge of relapse every second it was just that it was a, a con it's an anyone that's in recovery it, they're they're an addict right yep. it's not it's not like it's over right and that that was the tone of it it wasn't it wasn't like a you know quick we we have two two straight weeks out of this guy let's get a record out of him it wasn't like that at all